All right, so unit six, lesson 16, graphing from the vertex form. All right, so we have different ways that we are expressing a function called f. We have it in standard form, uh, which is this form right here. Then we have it in factored form, right? And then we have it in vertex form, which was the previous lesson, uh, lesson 15. Um, there are several different things that we can get from all three of these forms. So the first question they ask is, which form would you use if you want to find the following features of the graph F? Be sure to prepare uh, to explain your reasoning. So which form would you use for finding the x-intercepts? Which form would you use to find the vertex form? <coughs> Cough, lesson 15. Uh, which form would you use uh, to find the y-intercept. So go ahead and figure out those three and pause the video and figure those out. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you've realized that uh, the x-intercepts was from last week's lessons um, where if you were to plug in a three, uh, you get zero times some number, right? Or if you plug in a one, uh, you end up getting zero times some number, which ultimately yields your outputs to be zero, while your inputs seem to be the opposite, if you will, of the terms inside those binomials. So your x-intercepts would be factored form. So factored form would be more ideal uh, for your x-intercepts. The vertex form, if you realize that you plug in the opposite of your x value inside here, and then whatever your number is out here gives you your y value for your vertex. So vertex form literally gives you the vertex. So of course the vertex form gives you your vertex. Um, the y-intercept, if you plug in zero for your inputs, whatever number is outside of all that, it's still just that number outside. So if you plug in zero, whatever number that is remaining is just gonna sit there. <laughs> so the y-intercept is gonna be in standard form. Just like uh, earlier in the year, um, this would be gravity, right? This would be your velocity, and this is the height in which your projectile, your baseball, your rocket would basically take off uh, from. So if you're on a hill, uh, that would be the height of your heel, or hill, heel, <laughs> heel. All right. All right, so next up, uh, sharing a vertex. So here are two equations uh, defined as quadratic functions. Uh, again, a quadratic function's parent function would look something like this. You have an x squared situation. Most likely, you're going to have a parabola. Okay, so this is P and Q are both quadratic functions. Um, what do you notice about the negativity here? What is the vertex uh, given here? So right away, you should know that the negativity, uh, are you concaving up or concaving down? Are you opening up or opening down? This one is negative, so you are opening down. Okay, your vertex, what's the opposite of negative four? positive four. What's the number on the outside? 10. So hopefully you realize that you have that characteristic right away just by looking at the function. Now, what about the half here? Okay, um, notice it's less than one, right? So this is actually what we call, again, a compression. So instead of looking like this for your parent function, um, you're a little bit shorter now, okay? You're, you're compressed, kind of like Danny DeVito. Much respect. All right, so your vertex, where is your vertex gonna be? Uh, and again, same as last time. So those are the two differences, right? Now, they say that graph P passes through zero comma negative six. You can actually test that. So to test that, that's our x value, right? So if you plug in uh, zero in for your x, 
you actually, you should uh, get negative six. And I, right now I'm just testing that. Okay, so you get negative four squared, right, which is 16. Uh, and that's negated, right, on the outside. Negative four times negative four is positive 16, but the negative makes it a negative 16. So, and then if you add the 10, you should end up getting uh, negative six. So that checks out. Um, and four comma 10, so go ahead and test that one, just like how I did, just to make sure. And then um, they also show it on the coordinate plane. So let's go ahead and scroll down to what they were talking about. Okay, so they already got those points plotted for us. We know the vertex to be at four comma 10. So let's go ahead and get four comma 10 and zero comma negative six. And okay, find the coordinates of the of another point on graph P. Explain, show your reasoning. Okay, so, and is it concaving up or down? Let's remember, we're concaving down. So I am assuming, again, this is our vertex. So I'm assuming that's a horrible curve, just horrible. I'll try to do better here. All right, something like that. So that's a part of it. And I know this line has to keep going down somewhere. Go ahead and find me another coordinate. All right. Um, we plugged in zero. We have four. You know what? Test eight. Test eight. Eight comma what? Okay. So go ahead and find me that. All right. So hopefully you plugged in eight for your equation. Um, so let's go ahead and test that. So we're plugging in eight and for the negative x was it minus four and then we're squaring it and then we're adding 10 to it so you should get a four squared plus the 10 we're negating that so negative 16 plus the 10 and you end up getting negative six. Oh, that's interesting because we got negative six when we plugged in zero. That makes sense because, oh, that is just a horrible, horrible drawing. It's the stuff nightmares are made of. Okay, so you, you get the point, right? I'm not gonna to torture myself on this screen. All right, but that is definitely a parabola. It's much prettier when you uh, try it on Desmos. So uh, what I want you to try to do is try graphing q of x um, on Desmos and see what the difference looks like uh, compared to the graph that I drew of p. Okay, so this is p and you find me q. All right. All right, um, let's look at these situations here. Um, again, you're taking care of, so you're definitely doing number two, okay? You're definitely graphing q, okay? Now, this one person says, uh, once I knew the vertex, four comma 10, I could find out with gra without graphing uh, whether the vertex is the maximum or minimum of function p. Um, I would just compare the coordinates of the vertex with the coordinates of a point on either side. Okay, so um, complete the table and then explain how this person uh, might have reasoned about whether the vertex is the minimum. Okay, so remember the minimum is at the bottom of your parabola and the maximum is at the top of your parabola, depending on which way it opens. Okay, so this is opening up and this one's opening down. Okay, you can only have maximums when you're uh, opening down. You can only have minimums when you're opening up. So Priya was testing these points. If she plugged in three, okay, what would she get? If she plugged in five, what would she get? So now, what's interesting is her theory, and I'm not going to answer this. This is this is for you, but I want to lead you in the right direction. Um, if this was 10, her two numbers that were two, either to the left or to the right of her, have to be greater than 10 in order for it to be a minimum. Uh, if it was down, uh, here's 10, right? These numbers would have to be uh, less 
than 10. Okay, so less than 10 in order to be a maximum. So go ahead, you can test this. You can plug these numbers in. You know, plug in three, plug in five, and see if the numbers are greater or less than 10. And that should determine which one is which, whether four comma 10 is your minimum or your maximum. All right, so one thing that I would love for you, for you to do, and this is really important, all right? This is super important. If you can do this, you are that much stronger for the rest of uh, high school in terms of quadratics, especially in vertex form. So go ahead, try to match uh, the function with the graph. Okay, so hopefully you paused it, you tried it, and um, so here we go. Um, this is definitely opening up, and your vertex is definitely at one comma four, right? <clears throat> so match that graph would be um, F. Look at that. He already gave us the letters. Adorable. So try not looking at the letters if you already have not. They do try to trick you. They add this in here, right? So just be aware of that. That does uh, create some issues. Go ahead and match those as best you can. Um, I don't know if they match them alphabetical or not. I'm not going to answer that, but see if you can match those on your own. But I kind of gave you a hint already. All right, that's it. Good luck.